disappointments you took. Come on now. How many seasons of depression being let down, yeah. being kicked down. Come on now. Still you got up. Come on. Still you survived. Still you thrive. Yes. Still you got faith. Yeah. The devil can't believe you still here this morning. Because you are a miracle. Emotion. Emotion. You'll go through the pit experience. Yeah, I mean. Because that's part of your destiny journey. And the Bible says quickly that while he was in a pit, some Ishmaelite traders came passing by. Yeah. And the brother said, listen, this guy is not dead, my translation. Let's just sell him. So they sold him for 20 shekels of silver, which is equivalent to the price of a slave. Mm. They sold their brother for the price of a slave family. Yeah. Sure. Can you believe it? But anyway, they sell him, and now he's on his way to Potiphar's house. Because you go from the prophecy, and you go to the pit, but you also go through a Potiphar's house experience. Are you still with me now? Because your miracle is unfolding. Somebody say, work it out, Pastor. Here's what I want you to notice about the Ishmaelite traders. A few hundred years ago, all right? When Abraham slept with Hagar, you remember that? Because he was impatient for the promise. He was supposed to have waited for the promise and have a child with Sarah. But because he was impatient, he ran ahead, slept with Hagar. Ishmael was born, was he not? Yeah. Ishmael was the son of the bond woman, the Bible tells us. He was not the son of promise. No. Come on, man. Yeah. He was the son of bondage. Are you with me? But, a few hundred years later, that which was a son of bondage, that which was supposedly a mistake, that which shouldn't have happened, becomes the vehicle and the transport to take Joseph into his destiny. Man, I want you to get this in your spirit this morning. God is going to send some people your way that were not even supposed to be coming your way. But somehow God has smiled upon you. He's seen your faith. I got to work that out because Ishmael was not supposed to be born. Are you with me? He was not supposed to be there. But a hundred years later, God saw into the future that he needed a, a caravan, a taxi to take Joseph from the pit to the pot of his house. So he worked it out for his good. That's powerful. Hallelujah. It reminds me of a phone call I got when we were stuck with this building and the next phase was the roof. And I thought, oh God, who has already ducked our mark? Because we needed money, you see. And a woman by the name of Patricia, not Hector or Abrams, calls me out of the blue. Pastor, I need to see you. Can I meet you by your mother's house? This woman doesn't even attend the church. She doesn't even belong to the church. But here she comes. She just received the retirement package and she comes and she gives us twelve and a half thousand rand towards the building and we needed I think fourteen thousand for the sheets. The Ishmaelite is coming your way. house and you know the story while he's there 
The Bible says, while he's a prisoner, he prospers. You know why he prospered also? Because he was faithful with another man's belongings. That's what Potiphar's house speaks about. It speaks about the season in your life where you need to serve somebody else. Where you need to, come on now, help someone else with their dream. Help someone else with their vision. Where you play second fiddle. Where you're not the star of the show. Where you are not, come on now, the spotlight person. But faithfully, you are helping someone else. Faithfully, you are. I mean, Joseph had a dream that he was going to rule, but he finds himself serving. That doesn't make sense, does it? But he's a miracle in motion, you see. The story doesn't end with him in part of his house. You may be now in a season where you are doing something you don't like to do. But do it to the best of your ability. I said do it with excellence. Amen. If you were a tea lady, serve that tea with excellence. Don't spill it. Don't miss it. Yeah. We call on the board, you city. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Don't get the sugar wrong. Amen. Take it to who it must go to with a smile on your face. Because that's your season. Yeah. All right. If you're a laborer, a bricklayer, amen, come on out. Do it with excellence. Amen. Whatever it is that you are doing, amen. serve whoever you are under with excellence. Right. Part of this house speaks of Joseph's faithfulness. Even while his prophecy is unfolding. Are you listening? Amen. You see, some people want to judge you by where you're at. Sometimes you judge you by where you're at. It's the biggest mistake you can make. Because you're a miracle in motion. God's not done with you yet. Amen. I said to my wife, I said, wife, listen, I promised you. When we reach 10 years of, of marriage, I'm going to take you to Mauritius. It never happened. But I'm telling you, by the time we get to 20 years of marriage, it will Praise the Lord. Are you listening to me? Yes. Amen. But some of you, some of you, listen, some of you, 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 you're, not, you you're so focused on where you're at now. Your world is so boxing you in right now. You don't realize that there are still other phases, other seasons, other stuff that's waiting to unfold as you walk through your destiny. Don't die with your prophecy. Don't die in the pit. Don't die in Potiphar's house. Be faithful. Be diligent. Serve those who are over you, even if they work on your nights. Yeah. Yeah. When I fell in love with my wife so all those years ago, I used to work for my in-laws. I was their driver. Yeah, driver, driver team. No, I was on Bible school. It was good money though. But the point is I was a driver team. You know, if you met me in 1995, you would have met the driver team. <laughs> but that was that's okay, you see. I had a Prophecy, come on now, somebody. I had a call, I had a dream, I knew where God was taking me to. And in that season, I had to serve whoever I had to serve faithfully, I hope, diligently, I hope, with excellence, I hope. I was so determined to do well that when my father-in-law said we don't open on a Saturday, I said I'm going to open that shop on a Saturday and I'll run it myself. Yeah. And you can ask them for a few Saturdays, they stay at a shop of their life when I came to their house with money. Yeah. <laughs> because they said Saturdays we don't make business in this industry. Yeah. I said alright, I'll open the shop, I'll stand there by myself. Are you listening to me? Yes, yeah. <laughs> when you when you when you are a miracle in motion, even in a part of his experience, yeah. you say yes, sir. Amen. No, sir. Yeah. Do what you ask me to do. You don't throw your weight around yeah. like you the charge yeah. when you are the dagger mitzah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
you, you, you're faithful as the dagger mixer. Yeah, right, right. Because one day God may make you the charge. Yes, yes, yes. But if you give your charge problems, <laughs> one day your dagger mixers are going to give you problems. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right, all right. Amen. Amen. Are you listening? Yeah. So, 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 so now he's in, you know the story. So, so, Potiphar's wife. The Bible says, cast longing eyes on Joseph. Okay, what's he come out to do? Maybe he's come out to start the this six pack and a one box. And the Bible says, he comes to the liquor deep for long. And the Bible says, he comes to smile. And you're not to say, say, Joey. But the Bible says on that day when she grabbed hold of Joseph, the Bible says he let go of his coat and he ran. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Because in that season of serving, you will be tested. Yeah. Yes. Your integrity will be tested. Amen. Your, your character will be tested. But as we move to the next place quickly, we see that he moves from he moves from Potiphar's house. There's more to say. Time doesn't allow us. He moves into a prison. Because now Potiphar's wife accuses him of raping her. And, and the man gets thrown into prison because of a false accusation. Sometimes you're going to find yourself in trouble because of false accusations. It's amazing how people like lies more than the truth. <laughs> and sometimes people will believe a lie over the truth. Because it's more juicy, it's more seductive, yeah. it's more intrusive, it's, it's inviting, yeah. you know? Are you the same to me? Yeah. Yes, it's the truth. You know, but when, when you tell people good news, like, that's why the papers don't print good news, because it won't sell. Yeah. But they just want to tell us about who got murdered, who got raped, who was killed, how many accidents on the road, and I'm on Kubai. And I mean, it's only Kubai. Goeie <laughs> nie sê, because of our nature. Are you with me now? So yes, Joseph in prison, but, but here's the thing about Joseph. Joseph's in prison, but the prison is not in him. Amen. What the prison speaks about is your ability to stand strong even when you feel like falling. Because while he's in prison, falsely accused, without a trial, without a judge, without a hearing, just a false case. The Bible says he still prospers. Oh, hallelujah. You will prosper in your prison. You will prosper in a place of confinement. Because some people may say to you, Hey, Jacob van die Plena, or Jacob van die Menneburger, or Jacob van die Veld, Heideveld, or die Stint. That's niks binnen jou nie. Jy is a niks. But Joseph is in prison. But the prison is not in him. You may find yourself in an unhealthy environment, but don't let the environment get inside of you. Amen. Because you are a miracle in motion. Amen. 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 And don't be shy to say where you come from. Because that speaks volumes of where you're going to. Amen. Because your end is always greater than your beginning. Amen. So if you tell people where you came from, it's a testimony of where God has taken you to. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 I'm a brother came swimming there by me a few weeks ago and he says to me, he says to me, oh Christopher, 34 Brentwood Road, <laughs> Weinberg. <laughs> and I, you won't know what that means, but, but that's where we grew up. Yeah. We grew up in 34 Brentwood Road, Weinberg, at the back of my grandfather's house in the little room. Hallelujah. That's where we grew up. So he looks at me and God brought us a mighty long way. <laughs> I said, well, the best is still to come, though, man. The best is still to come, hallelujah. Because God's not done with us yet. Are you listening? Do you believe that you can go and see the world? Do you believe that you can enjoy life? Do you believe that God can give you only the best? Do you believe? 